Welcome back to Homemakers New Area, No Dig. Eight weeks since we were here in June. It's now 22nd August and summer has happened. We've had fantastic summer actually of plenty of rain. Like we had four inches, 100 mil nearly in August this last three weeks. And temperatures mostly low 20 centigrade. So pleasant warmth, good for growth. We had one really hot week, which helped a bit as well. And here, for example, we planted lettuce on 21st of June. So two months ago, we've been picking them for five weeks, taking off the outer leaves. Uh, they're coming towards an end, partly because this bed is not hugely fertile. We, this was pasture only four months ago and we put cardboard and that small amount of compost on, had polythene over so that the weeds were only just dying when we planted the lettuce. And the lettuce have been all right, they haven't been the best. And we've now interplanted with brassica salads, which are great for the autumn, so they take over from the lettuce. So you're popping in plants between existing plants is a really nice way to keep the cropping going. Although up this end, we have been losing some lettuce actually. Um, this is salad rocket planted between Batavian lettuce and the Batavians are very susceptible to root aphids. So root aphids suddenly appear in our climate around the middle of August. They do that where the plant goes suddenly limp. I mean, it just happens almost overnight. And so you think you've got a nice lettuce one day and then it's kind of gone. Fortunately, there's no root aphid yet anyway in the main garden and we're making new plantings of lettuce, which will take over. I'm confident that root aphid won't get in them. And also it doesn't attack endive. So endive are a good alternative option if you suffer from lettuce root aphid. This is a brand new bed made three days ago by children, <laughs> ages three to nine. I was working with them as part of a new project for a book which will come out eventually, No Dig for Kids. They really enjoy doing that. We'll bear the compost, pop in the plants just three days ago. While these older beds we're going to feature in a video and that'll be explaining the difference or different results from using homemade compost as the top layer or sieved wood chip in this one where the growth was slower at the beginning but it's picking up now. Around this bed I've put cardboard again recently <laughs> so we still a lot of bindweed. The bindweed is definitely getting weaker though. It is heartening to see that. It's not got the same vigour. Having said that, we have been pulling bindweed here as well. So this is the area where the potatoes were. This was black polythene last time with potatoes. The harvest was at the end of July. We got 130 kilos of potatoes here. Fantastic harvest, just pulled them out. Mostly they're pretty close to the surface, quite good size. They're now in sacks in the shed without washing clean or anything. So they just store in there, that's winter food. And here's more winter food. So we transplanted the leeks on the same day of the potato harvest, which was 23rd of July in that case, so just a month ago. And they were leeks that had been sown three months before. So that's given them a good start. And we've done three sessions with a trowel and bindweed. Well, under here we have broccoli. This broccoli rab, which is kind of Chinese, smaller heads of broccoli. But yeah, looking along there, I'm, I'm pleased to see that. These plants went in tiny. They went in 12 days ago. They were so small, you know, you just think, can this work? I still think that when we're putting in small plants here. And yet you see that result. Putting in small plants, you get this amazingly quick rooting. And I think no dig is really helping with that because you've got that mycorrhizal structure in the soil, which is like a rooting system already. The new roots of these plants connect with the mycorrhizae and whoosh. I mean, look at these. They've been here. They were put in there about the 25th of June, so that's eight weeks. Eight weeks of growth, it's done that. Clearly it's the eight weeks of summer, you know, late June, July, first three weeks of August, but well, that's maximum growth time here particularly. Where we're, we're often a bit short of warmth, but usually plenty of moisture. And look again at the effect of the bindweed, of the polythene on the bindweed, I should say, and how the bindweed deprived of light is struggling to grow so it's all the time the parent root is being weaker it's getting weaker because it's making that growth and not getting any food back the wool you can see that we put on slowly decaying uh, it's a trial i don't yet know how much difference this will make but we were given the wool so why not try it and the ground was clearly in good heart anyway there is compost on the no dig soil 
polythene here will need to stay down until these brassicas finish because I'm not going to cut it to take it off and they, they're self-watering so although it's black polythene the water the rain flows into the planting holes it's you know it's really easy <laughs> sub material to use this is butternut squash which is why they're still pretty green leaf butternut's always late and you can see they're starting to develop usually what I find with the squash is that these little immature ones that I'm pretty confident will fall off, which I don't mind at all, it'll rot and then fall off. If you see that, it's because we're now late August, they, they've only really got another five weeks, maybe six of growing conditions suitable for them. So they need to mature. <laughs> and the tomatoes are certainly ripening nicely. They've had a, a reasonable summer, considering this polytunnel only went up three months ago and we, we weren't actually right on, on it to plant straight away, but they've been good they've done nicely uh, there's <coughs> sakura in the front and sun gold lovely cherry tomatoes beef tomatoes and aubergines on the other side one pepper plant and a nice selection of chilies from delphlem plants jill vaughan selection really tasty <laughs> some quite hot ones the beetroot here are going to get big i don't mind that at all even they get enormous Big, they won't get woody, not grown, no dig with compost. This, that way, if, if they can get woody if you use fertilizer, but this is good. We'll just have big beetroots for storage. And the celery, this last time we were here, this was broccoli. So they've been in less than eight weeks and they've done this already. Actually doing side shoots as well. I slightly wish I'd taken some of these side shoots off, but you can see that the main stem is looking strong and pretty much ready for harvest actually. So we'll be picking these pretty soon and this variety of cabbage is puzzling me it's called Delaware and I was given it by a kind lady um, and I missed her comment that it's a leaf cabbage not a heading cabbage <laughs> so we'll see what happens it's a bit like a, a, a cabbage kale I guess I had hope for a heart I'd like to do some krauts with the cabbage but maybe you can with these outer leaves the asparagus has been fantastic for, for year one asparagus, I'm more than happy with this amount of growth. Considering, again, these, these crowns went in on the 24th of April. So that's just four months they've been in the ground. And you don't expect to pick this for quite a long time, three, three years maybe. But it's just building up its energy. And we're keeping on top of the bindweed, just. Likewise here, the rhubarb really got its feet down now, so to speak, below the wood chip. And it's well into the soil where the weeds have died. And that is now great soil underneath, full of the fertility, natural fertility of the soil. The wood chip on top is not adding fertility, and it's a similar story here. So this was a just a trial to see what would happen and not grow, but put wood chip on top. And look at the slugs. <laughs> That's from being underneath the polythene. And it's been a sluggy summer, and I know late plantings we've had some problems recently but not too many mostly because a lot of our plantings we got on got in the ground in good time and that's certainly it's more difficult to plant things in high summer often when there's in this climate in damp climates when there's a lot of slugs and snails compared to earlier in the summer spring even when it's drier so there's something to bear in mind if you've had problems this year um, up the other end of this polythene i did pop in a couple of squash plants just to see I don't normally like leaving ground bare like this, but in the longer term interest of how wood chip can work and using polythene cover like this, I think it's very interesting to compare this with the rest of the ground. And you can see how these squash, I think thanks to there have been quite a lot of wood chip there, not really doing a lot. I don't think we'll get many, much harvest there. This is Romanesco cauliflower at this end and Savoy cabbage there. This is where the peas were. And wow, I'm pleased with the growth there. And you can see how the mesh is working really, really well to keep off the insects. We've got very healthy growth here. The leaves, <laughs> having said that, actually blow me down. That rather looks like a bit of caterpillar, possibly. That's something to check tomorrow. But mostly, <laughs> maybe something sneaked in the corner. Uh, mostly the leaves are really healthy. And mesh covers like this normally i'll keep on for the first six weeks on brassicas here it might be a bit longer because of rabbit possibly 
similar story for chicory there and a lot of bindweed we need to pay attention to. You can see how every bed though has got some, some really nice plants in like the chard we've picked a couple of times. That'll be good mainly for autumn. I'm looking for that to harvest. And then these squash will come ready probably in about a week or so. Uh, sorry, maybe, maybe two actually, maybe three. I'm being a bit optimistic there. Whereas the corn definitely is ready. Look at this. This is variety called early bird. And although it's not grown in a tight block, you know, the plants are quite well spaced out. You can see how there's very nice pollination there. Just a little bit of damage could be from birds pecking near the top. That was a little while ago even, I'd say. Uh, so th these are good to eat now, for sure. I'm a little bit worried about badgers always here. If they find this, they'll make quite a mess. It's the mess they make as much as anything. Uh, but this, these will be good for supper. And the crown prince squash. Wow, I mean, look at that. This is 38 plants here. And I would hope we get at least two or three squash from each plant, which means there could be a hundred squash here. And um, with the crown prints are quite big and they, they are fine just to be sitting on the ground like that on the polythene. There's absolutely no issue with that. You don't need to put anything underneath your squashes. Just let them be on the ground. They're very hard skin. And they usually, you can see they're right when they start to go a bit yellow. The, stalk dries off more than it is it's still quite green so there's no rush to harvest them they're fine there yeah it could even be a month actually I mean you could could harvest some now but I think the flavor will improve if they left and over there something we haven't yet seen is bees so there are three hives which arrived quite late in in early June we'd expected them in May and that meant that we missed the spring uh, pollen and nectar. But it was a late spring and that was in our favour. So the bees have actually done really well, better than I'd hoped. And we might even get some honey this year. The people who supplied them, Black Bee Honey, have done a nice job of helping us to look after them, together with Brani, who's involved with um, getting to know the bees and learning what to do. And I managed to find time even last week to, to have a session with Jed, who was showing me how to handle the, we, we took the supers off the top, which were nice and heavy, <laughs> a bit of honey. And the brood had a lot of bees on each comb, which was very promising. Nice. You know, they don't have a set way of doing it, they just do it, you know? Yeah. So they don't all look the same. But all the cells are the same size, they're all six millimetres, which is incredible. And finally, the shed. So this has been progressing in stages, <laughs> nothing very rapid, but they finally got the cladding on the wooden sides, which is lovely larch wood. Sorry, Douglas fir. Uh, the floor is larch, and that's nice thick planks. The sides are Douglas fir, which is the same wood as on the front of my compost base, and that will go silver colour. It's got natural oil in, so I'm not expecting to put anything on it, or not for a while anyway. And the shed has a good space inside for storing things mainly. <laughs> we might find other uses for it, we'll see. Also it has the veranda there, which will have a nice view over the pond, which is still waiting to be dug. And we may see that in the next video. We'll see um, when Jack, my son, gets here with his digger. And we'll hope to join you then sometime in October or November. <laughs>